All right, this is a short recording. We're going to talk about some of the features of VS Code uh, in a little more depth. Of course, we've been using it uh, in our code spaces in the class, but i uh, just like to go into a little more depth about some of the features and customizations. So uh, I'm currently working in the terminal window on my local computer um, in a folder that uh, houses the source code for a Paradigm, a code that we've worked on. So um, from here, I'm going to go ahead and launch code uh, just uh, with the command code. And this should look familiar to you. This is v Visual Studio Code running on my local computer, um, not in code space, but just here locally. Um, and uh, what you immediately notice that the file browser over here is opened up. And um, I, I, earlier, I had to open this up and, and, and looked at some of these files, and so it opens in that same position. Um, we can open files in an interactive way or a fuzzy search way by, uh, if we hit Control P, and that would be Control on a Linux or Windows machine, but Command on a Mac. Um, and so in the rest of this lecture, I'll, I'll use Control as the active key, but if you're on a Mac, you would want to use uh, the Command or Apple key for that. So if you hit Control P, it brings up this search, which uses fuzzy search. So for example, I could just begin to type um, some word, keyword that I know, uh, like say for example isotropic, uh, they will bring up a list of files in this directory that, uh, or in this in this source code repository that match that, right? So for example if I uh, go ahead and were to open up uh, the second one, uh, then it opens up the file there. Now you see that a window popped up here on the lower right hand corner. It recognizes that this is a C++ file and asks me if I want to install the C++ extension. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. We'll talk about extensions in a little bit. Um, but right now I'm just going to, let's go and look at some of the code. Uh, so, um, you know, I have a customized some of my settings so that I can use my, my normal Vim key bindings to move my mouse around. However, there are a, a bunch of uh, built-in key bindings as well. Um, for, to doing, for doing various uh, editing tasks, selecting text and moving text and other things. You can, you can access them by going to the file menu and just looking at, say, for example, selection. So if you wanted to select all or uh, select a certain line or whatever, uh, as well as editing. So what I'll go ahead and do is just uh, select a line and then just show you one of those commands. So uh, if I hit the Alt key along with the arrow key, I can move the whole line around in the source code, right? So you can see I just moved that line uh, down to there. I could move it back up uh, that line of code wherever it should go. Um, so again, you would get to that by if you go to selection, you see move line up. So alt in the up arrow and alt in the down arrow move the selected text around. So that's just one way that you can edit text. Um, we can also say do search and replace within all of the files in the repository. So I can do uh, like control shift F that will bring up, uh, in this case it automatically brings up everywhere that the highlighted text is included in all the files, right? So you see here uh, 20 results in 20 files that this include Cicado line is there. I can also type in any other kind of search text. So for example, if I wanted to type in the word paradigm itself, um, you know, it appears 8,441 times in 598 files in this repository. If I wanted to replace that in all the files at once, then I can hit Control shift h and then it gives me a find and replace. So for in this example, uh, you know, I can, everywhere there's Paradigm, if I wanted to replace it with Paradigm 2 or Paradigm 3, for example, um, I could do that. You, you see then all the files, the, the old word and, and the new one, so if I, if I were to hit enter, then it would actually change all of those uh, throughout the entire file. So in addition to that, uh, there's a command palette which allows us to, uh, so to get to the command palette, we can hit control shift P, or we can just type like before control P, which brings up the, the uh, file open, uh, the, the file open dialog box. And if we just type the greater than symbol, then it brings us to the command palette. So, um, so for example, if I wanted to, uh, you know, 
find, like just like I did before the, with Control F, I can actually get that from the command palette. Basically, all of the commands that are available in the menu uh, at the top, they're all available uh, really quickly by opening the command palette, uh, Control Shift P, and then typing in some keyword to search what you want to do. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to say open up a new Python file, uh, I could just type Python new, you know, new Python file. Uh, that will bring bring that up, and then you know, let's go ahead and uh, give this file a name. So we'll go save as. Uh, we'll just call it test.py. Um, so now we have this, and we can write uh, again. It, 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 you can see here it's it's asking me about uh, uh, using a formatter. Uh, Again, I'm going to just close this dialog box for now. Um, but you know, I can type a little Python code. So for item in range of 10, print item. Uh, and then from there, uh, if I go ahead and save this, then I can run this immediately. Um, up here, I can just go and click the play button, which will run the Python file. Down here in the terminal, you see in this case, uh, it just printed out the numbers 0 to 10. Uh, I can also run this in a debugger immediately from the editor. So if I set a breakpoint by clicking over on the, the right hand side here, where the, you see the little uh, red dot there, if I click that, uh, that will set a breakpoint on this line. And then if I go over here uh, in the upper right hand side and I say run or debug Python file, it will open that file in a debugger and immediately stop on that line and then I can continue up here so if I hit uh, you know, continue once it's gonna run the code and, and you see it did print zero there and then it stopped on the next iteration so I can just continue to hit continue 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 each time it's stopping where that debug uh, flag is and, and running and of course you can you can inspect variables uh, over here on the left hand side you see the variable inspector uh, you can set uh, automatically set breakpoints if if raise if exceptions are raised, meaning errors are, are found, and other things uh, like that. So you can debug uh, f from right right here within uh, within Visual Studio Code. Um, we you know we saw the extension uh, pop up earlier. The the extensions browser is over here on the left, or you can get to it by typing Control Shift X. And if you click on that, then it brings up a little, you know, you can search for extensions, like for example, the Python extension, um, which is already installed on my machine, but you can install that here if you'd like. Um, you can then actually uh, take those extensions or uh, individual customizations and settings within your file, and you can sync those against across all instances of VS Code. So for example, if I uh, hit Control Shift P to bring up the command palette, and then I were to type in settings. Uh, in fact, I'll just click on this first one, settings sync, show settings, and click on that. And then in this case, what I'll do is I'll add a line to ex ignore uh, certain extensions from being synced across my uh, across my VS Code instances. So in this case, I'll, I'll click on this. It brings up my settings. Uh, file, which I'll show you more of in a second, but right now what I want to do is I want to add uh, Python, for example, uh, um, I'll just type Python, it should offer me a suggestion as to what the correct, uh, so right there, MS Python, Python, if I click that, um, then this uh, this uh, Python extension that I've installed, uh, it will run locally here on my machine, but it, but it will be ignored uh, from the installation on on any other instance of VS Code, like perhaps in a code space. Um, so from there, I can uh, you know we can just take a look at all my other extensions or uh, I'm sorry settings. So this is a file uh, settings.json which includes like all of these individual customizations that I have um, to, to make my sort of VS code kind of have uh, key bindings that behave like Vim. So for example, if I type uh, right quit, you know, control escape right, uh, con escape colon right quit, then that will uh, 
write and, and save that file. So I can go up here to the command, the command palette again. Uh, I'm going to type setting sync. Uh, in this case, um, I'll say sync now. That will ensure that those settings uh, get uploaded to the cloud. And then what, I can, what we can do is we can actually go over and open up a code space, or, for example, on GitHub. So I'll, I'll go to GitHub, uh, open up this code space here. going to take a second to set up. So now that we have a code space up and running, I'm going to go ahead and open up the command palette again. Uh, just type in settings JSON, which will allow me to open up that file. And you'll see that this uh, MS Python that we wrote when I was running VS Code locally, not from a code space, is in fact synced to here. So the last thing I want to point out, especially when you're dealing with code spaces in VS Code, is that you can actually have your dot files installed into your code space automatically every time. So for example, if I, uh, you know, I have my own dot files on GitHub here, and what I can do is actually go, if I go to my user settings, so you get to those on GitHub, I go into your username, and if you were to then go to settings, and then click over here on the right uh, to code spaces, I'm sorry, left, if you were to find yourself over here on the left in code spaces, then what you can see is there's this option to automatically install dot files. And so uh, if I do that, uh, it gives me the option to, to uh, basically select a repository. So in my case, uh, John T. Foster dot files, and there it is. And then uh, with that, now whenever I opened up a new code space, uh, those dot files will be installed automatically. So now you can see um, that some of my customizations are installed from my dot files, including this, uh, you know, the way my uh, terminal looks with the color uh, on my command line prompt, um, as well as other things. Of course, you can you could we could do a long listing of my home directory, and you can see that my bash profile, and my bash rc file are pointing to uh, this persisted shared dot files directory. That was where it was in automatically installed um, upon login. So um, just a way that you can further customize your code spaces with VS Code. Uh, I'd encourage you to look, you know, take, take a look at the online tutorials and references for actually the editing features of VS Code. Uh, there are a lot more there than, than what I could possibly cover here. But the point really is uh, you know, uh, create some customizations that improve your productivity and learn how to use uh, an editor properly to, to improve your productiv productivity as well.